Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHYU301. We have been discussing the first chapter, complex numbers, and this is the story so far. One of the messages that we have received from previous videos is that when it comes to find out certain functions of complex numbers or performing some operations of complex numbers, one of the forms or one of the representations of complex number is preferential over the others. And uh, in fact, in some cases, we have to use a particular representation to find out certain functions of complex number. For example, in the previous lecture, we saw that when it comes to finding out the powers of complex numbers, we considered integer powers of complex numbers, then it is better if we use the exponential form instead of the other two forms, especially when we want to find out the higher powers of complex number. One more important concept that we discussed in previous lecture is the concept of principal values. What are principal values? A complex number z when is written in exponential form, when it is written like this r into e to the power i theta, then there are actually infinitely many complex numbers which maps to the single point in our Gantt plane where L is any integer. It assumes values of any integers from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now all of these infinitely many complex numbers points to the same point in our Gantt plane. All of them have the same modulus but their argument is different. When this theta is in the range minus pi to plus pi when it is in this half open interval then we say that this theta is the principal value of the argument this concept of principal values is going to help us in this lecture where we want to consider how to find out roots of complex number first and then we will see how to find out exponential functions of complex numbers Let's begin by considering nth root of complex number. Now remember that nth root of a complex number always has n number of distinct points in our Gantt plane and we have to find all these points. Now why does nth root of a complex number has n number of distinct roots? The answer lies in the fact that if we have a polynomial of nth degree then there are n number of roots. Now suppose z is the complex number for which we are finding out the nth root. So we are basically trying to find out z raised to 1 by n. And suppose this is equal to x. Now for this equation, if I raise this to nth power, then what I get is z is equal to x raised to n. Now I can rearrange this equation and write x raised to n minus z is equal to 0. Now if I treat x as the variable, and z as the constant for which we are finding out the nth root then this is nothing but a polynomial of nth degree and we know that there should be n number of distinct roots to this polynomial or there should be n number of x such that they satisfy this equation and therefore there should be n number of distinct uh, complex number which satisfy the condition that x is equal to z raised to 1 by n. So this gives the answer to why are there n number of distinct roots to a complex number. Now let's see how to find out these n number of distinct roots. Suppose z is the complex number for which I want to find out the root. Even when the complex number is given in rectangular form, the first thing that you have to do before you find out the root is that you convert the complex number in exponential form and that form is going to be like this where theta is the principal value. For our convention, this principal value lies in this half in open interval minus pi to plus pi. Some other references may use another range for principal values of the argument which could be 0 to 2 pi this half interval. Now when I say that I want to find out nth root it is z raised to 1 by n which is going to be equal to r raised to 1 by n into e to the power i theta plus 2 pi l by n. So this is how we can find out nth root of complex number when it is written in exponential form. Now what are possible values for L? 
values of l are all the integer values starting from zero starting from minus infinity to plus infinity so these are the possible values l is equal to zero for principal argument let's first find out the first nth root of complex number i am calling that as z1 which is obtained when we consider the principal value of the argument so it is going to be z1 is going to be r raised to 1 by n into e to the power i theta by n so this first root of complex number has modulus which is equal to r raised to 1 by n and it has argument which is equal to theta by n to find out the second root now i'll consider the next value of l which is plus 1 so when l is equal to 1 we get the second root which is going to be equal to r raised to 1 by n into e to the power i theta plus 2 pi divided by n so this is the second root of this complex number z to get the third root now what is value of l that i should consider it is the next value which is equal to sorry this is l is equal to 1 l is equal to 2 so z3 which is the third nth root of complex number is equal to r raised to 1 by n into e to the power i theta plus 2 pi into 2 which is going to be theta plus 4 pi divided by n so this is the third nth root of complex number and this this will continue as i go on considering higher powers of l this will continue when l is equal to n minus 1 then we get the nth root which is going to be equal to r raised to 1 by n into e to the power i theta by n plus n minus 1 into 2 pi divided by n and in this way you can obtain all the n distinct roots of complex number let's quickly summarize the recipe for finding out all n distinct nth root of complex number so what we do we first write the complex number in exponential form then to find out the first nth root we consider the first value of l which is equal to 0 which is also the principal value so z1 which is first nth root of complex number is given by r raised to 1 by n into e to the power i theta by n this is the first root then next root is obtained for l is equal to 1 and that root is r raised to 1 by n into e to the power i theta plus 2 pi by n sorry and this way when we have l which is equal to n minus 1 we get the nth root which is going to be equal to r raised to 1 by n into e to the power i theta plus 2 pi into n minus 1 divided by n now these are all the n distinct values but what happens to other values of l suppose we consider l is equal to n what will happen is that number let me call that as n plus 1 for now is going to be equal to r raised to 1 by n into e to the power i theta by n plus 2 pi let's focus on the argument of this z n plus 1 this argument is basically same as the argument for z1 its argument is theta by n and for this number the argument is theta by n plus 2 pi so what what is happening is we are completing one rotation and getting the same point back so z n plus 1 will be a point which is overlapping on z1 
In this way, when we consider higher and higher values of L, what will happen is these roots will start overlapping on the roots that we already have and therefore they are not distinct. Only n number of roots are distinct. Now there are some things that you should note about these n distinct roots. First of all, all n roots have same modulus that is mod z1 it's same as mod z2 it's same as mod z3 and all of them have modulus which is equal to r raised to 1 by n now r is a real number and therefore r raised to 1 by n is real number as expected for modulus of a complex number another thing to note of these roots are about their argument now let's focus on arguments of these complex numbers. These arguments, they are increasing for each consecutive root by 2 pi by n. Apart from that, all these n arguments are of this form n plus 2 pi m divided by n where m is always less than n and therefore what happens is this part is always less than 2 pi and therefore all of them they are lying within one rotation in argon plane so keep that in mind this summarizes the procedure to get all n distinct nth root of complex number even when the complex number is given in rectangular form the first thing is to convert that to exponential form, find out its modulus and argument and write z as r into e to the power i theta plus 2 pi l where l is integer. Now to get n distinct nth roots, you start with l is equal to 0. That will give you the first nth root of complex number which is for l is equal to 0. To get the second distinct root, you increase the value of L to 1, then Z3 will be L is equal to 2 and you continue this procedure till you get the nth root which, for which L is going to be equal to n minus 1 and in this way you have all the n distinct roots for the complex number. Now what happens to negative values of L, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and so on why are we not considering those negative values i'm leaving that question open for you to think about it i'm sure you will come up with the answer now let's consider a few examples the first one is cube root of unity so z is equal to 1 since we are considering unity and we want to find out cube root of that so we are finding out z raised to 1 by 3 now it is clear that there is only one real possible answer, so only one real cube root to this, but there are going to be two more complex roots. Let, let's find all, the, all of them. So what I do first, I first write down this complex number 1 in exponential form. Before we write it in exponential form, let me plot it. So it is going to be somewhere here, where this distance is equal to 1 and since this is the point I already know that argument is 0 so 1 can be written as 1 into e to the power i into 0 which is the principal argument but there are of course infinitely many argument which point to the same point in argon plane where L assumes integer values Let's now find out the first cube root for 1, z1, which is 1 raised to 1 by 3 is equal to 1 raised to 1 by 3 into e to the power i into 0 by 3 because for this I am considering L to be equal to 0 and z1 is equal to 1. You can verify that. So this 1 itself is the first cube root of unity. The second root z2 
is obtained when L is equal to 1. So Z2 then is equal to 1 raised to 1 by N into e to the power i 0 plus 2 pi divided by 3 since we are finding out the cube root the third root so z2 is e to the power 1 into e to the power i into 2 pi by 3 2 pi by 3 radian is 120 degrees and therefore this point will be somewhere here z this is going this is z1 this is z2 to find the third cube root z3 l is equal to 2 and z3 therefore is equal to 1 raised to 1 by 3 into e to the power i 0 plus 4 pi by 3 so z3 is 1 into e to the power i 4 pi by 3 4 pi by 3 radian is 240 degrees so it is going to be somewhere here now what you should notice here is all these three cube roots they form a kind of symmetry in our gun plane each of them is making an angle of 120 degrees with each other which is 2 pi by 3 difference so there is difference of 2 pi by 3 between all these three distinct roots you can see a kind of symmetry in the argon plane when you plot nth root of any complex number this is how you can find out cube root of 1 let's consider one more example minus i raised to 1 by 2 so z is now equal to minus i before we find out square root of this complex number minus i we have to find we have to write it in exponential form let's plot it first so this minus i is going to be here because this is real axis and this is imaginary axis this distance now is equal to minus 1 and now i don't have to use the calculator to find out what is r and theta i can see that r is equal to 1 and theta is equal to minus pi by 2 minus i can be written as 1 into e to the power i minus pi by 2 of course there is this 2 pi l argument which can always be added to get the same point in our gun plane we don't write this part all the time but since we are considering the roots we have to write it now how do I get the first square root z1 which is minus i raised to 1 by 2 for that I have to consider the principal value of the argument which is equal to minus pi by 2 so z1 therefore is 1 raised to 1 by 2 into e to the power i minus pi by 4 you can check that you can verify that pi by 4 radian is 45 degrees but we have a negative sign that means it is rotated in clockwise direction so z1 we will obtain it somewhere here i will erase this where this angle is now 45 degrees or pi by 4 radians to get the second root now we have to consider l is equal to 1 and z2 therefore is going to be equal to 1 raised to 1 by 2 into e to the power i minus pi by 2 plus 2 pi divided by 2 z2 is then 1 into e to the power i minus pi by 4 plus pi therefore z2 is equal to 1 into e to the power i 3 pi by 4 3 by 3 pi by 4 radians is 135 degrees so that point will be here which is z2 now with this angle as 135 degrees or 
3 pi by 4 radians. So these are the two square roots of minus i. Now if you want, you can write these roots in rectangular form. So z1 now is going to be equal to 1 plus sorry 1 minus i by root 2 and the second number z2 is going to be equal to minus 1 plus i by root 2 you can verify that so real part of z1 is 1 by root 2 and its imaginary part is minus 1 by root 2 similarly for z2 real part is minus 1 by root 2 and its imaginary part is 1 by root 2 I am leaving it for you to verify this. Now we will move on to finding out the other function of complex number which is exponential function. So this is the function that we are trying to find out e to the power z where z is a complex number. Now this is much easier as compared to finding out the roots of complex number. In this case you have to have the complex number in rectangular form. So even if the number is given in some other form, exponential or polar, you have to convert that to rectangular form. And when the complex number is written in a rectangular form, it is like this. e to the power z is now simple. It is e to the power x plus i y, which is equal to e to the power x into e to the power i y. Now I can use Euler's formula here for second term for this term and I can write e to the power x is equal to cos y plus i sin y. Remember here I have used Euler's formula. And therefore e to the power z is equal to e to the power x cos y plus i into e to the power x sin y. So this is the real part of e to the power z and this is the imaginary part. Let's consider one example of this. Suppose I want to find out e to the power 2 plus i. So we are finding out e to the power z where z is equal to 2 plus i this is equal to e to the power 2 plus i i can write as e to the power 2 into e to the power i this is equal to e square into cos 1 plus i sin 1 keep in mind that this angle here 1 is in radians it is not degrees so when you calculate it it is e to the 3.99 plus i into 6.22 so this is e to the power 2 plus i you can see that this is the real part whereas 6.22 is the imaginary part if you plot e to the power 2 plus i in argon plane this number is going to lie somewhere here this is imaginary axis, sorry, this is real axis, this is imaginary axis. This distance is 3.99, whereas this distance is 6.22. Finding out exponentials of complex number is much easier, less complicated as compared to finding out roots of complex number. Here we have discussed both the topics for today's lecture. This is the summary of the lecture. When you are finding out nth roots of complex number, you have to keep in mind that there are always n number of distinct points in argon plane for nth root of a complex number. Then all these points are symmetrically spaced in argon plane and therefore you see a symmetrical diagram when you plot all these n roots in complex plane. Then we considered how to find out exponential of a complex number. Here, when you are finding out nth root of complex number, you always have to write the complex number in exponential form. 
फेयर एज वेन यू आर फाइंडिंग आउट एक्सपोनशियल फंक्शन ऑफ अ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर इट शुड बी रिटर्न इन रेक्टेंगुलर फॉर्म इन नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल सी हाउ टू फाइंड आउट ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक फंक्शन ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर हाउ टू फाइंड आउट साइन जेड और हाउ टू फाइंड आउट कॉस जेड वी विल ऑल्सो डिफाइन द हाइपरबोलिक फंक्शन ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर दिस इज ऑल फॉर टूडेज वीडियो थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग